Shalom, everyone. I am so excited. Here we are. The new moon of the month of Nisan. One of the things I want to mention, uh, if you look at our slide, you see the gears of like uh, the inside of a grandfather clock. Well, I want you to know God has a time clock himself. He has a schedule that he is keeping. And when you think of these gears within a time clock, when it comes to God's calendar, God's time clock, the gears revolve around the weekly Shabbat, the monthly new moons, and the annual festivals. These are known as Moedim, or God's appointed times. Then on a larger scale, Besides the Moedim gears, you have the Shemitah cycle. Every seventh year is a Shemitah cycle, closing out a seven-year cycle. And then after seven sevens, 49 years, comes the Jubilee year. This is why it is so important to be on God's calendar. This is so significant, and especially tonight, and I'll tell you why. Where... Nisan 1 was the very day that Moses' tabernacle was inaugurated. It was the grand opening ceremony. Believe it or not, we are entering and celebrating the anniversary of God's glory, God's presence coming down from heaven on earth. It happened historically on this very day. And we want to welcome God's glory, the anniversary of this great event with the inauguration ceremony of the tabernacle of Moses. We find, as we celebrate the month of Nisan, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, God is the one speaking here, guys. And he said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And this had nothing to do with winter, spring, summer, fall. That Hebrew word for seasons is moadim. It means God created the sun and the moon not only for signs, which come through eclipses, but also for the appointed times. When it says days and years, it's talking about Shemitah years, Jubilee years. It's talking about the holy days. Well, the new moon, the start of every biblical month, is the most pivotal date in the biblical calendar. Because if you don't know when the first is or the new moon is, how would you know when any of the biblical holidays fall during that month? This particular month is the very month, and it's tonight. Think about this. This very night, as you look at the new moon, that was the very same moon that God spoke to Moses in Egypt in Exodus. He says, look at this new moon. This new moon is to be the beginning of a new year for you. And tonight is that very same new moon on the very same day, some 3,500 years ago. We know in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible begins and it ends with the tree of life. It says, out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Well, guess what? In Revelation chapter 22, at the end of the book, we also find that same tree of life we saw at the beginning. Listen to the word of the Lord. He showed me a river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street, on one side of the river, and on that was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruits, 
yielding its fruit every month. And when it says it yields its fruit every month, he won't be using January or February. All right? It means the biblical months is what he's talking about based on the new moon. Well, what about during the millennial reign? My goodness, can you imagine? Here we have the thousand-year reign of Messiah. Are we going to be keeping the new moon at that time? Well, listen to Ezekiel chapter 46 and verse 1. It says, Thus says the Lord God, The gate of the inner court that looks toward the east will be shut six working days, but on the Sabbath it will be opened, and on the day of the new moon it will be open." Imagine that during the thousand-year reigns we're going to keep the actual Sabbath, and we're going to keep every month the new moon. Well, what about after the millennial reign? What happens when eternity begins? There's a new heaven and a new earth. Well, guess what? In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22 and 23, it says, God is speaking, as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so your seed and your name shall remain. He's speaking to the Jewish people here. And he says it will happen from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will come and worship before me, says the Lord. Do you realize even after the, the, the old, this old earth is gone, we have a new heaven, a new earth, millennial reign is over. For eternity, eternity, we will be keeping the Sabbath and the new moon. Wow. We find in Psalms 104, verse 19 through 21, that God, he says, it says, made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows his going down you make darkness and it is night and then it says this is when all the beasts of the forest creep forth and the young lions roar after their prey and they seek their meat from god this is telling us that god specifically made the moon to mark these appointed times now, listen to Psalm 81, verse 3 and 4. It says, Blow the shofar at the new moon and at the full moon for our feast day. That is speaking of Passover, uh, Sukkot, or tabernacles. And it says, This is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. God wants the shofar blown at the new moon. Now, I've got a little ram's horn here, and I'm going to attempt to blow it for us all. And let's sanctify this month. Let's set this month apart as all of us gather together and stand as one big happy family. did it. All right. I want you to know this new moon really is all about God's covenant with David and the Jewish people. Listen to this. This is Psalms 89, which really is a psalm for the new moon. Listen, it says in verse 20, I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also will strengthen him. And then God says in verse 23 and 24, God says, I'm going to beat to pieces his adversaries before him, smite them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy will be with him and through my name shall his horn be exalted. And then we find in verse 28 and 29, God says, forever will I keep my mercy for him and my covenant will stand fast with him. His seed will I make to endure forever 
and his thrones as the day of heaven. Now listen to verse 33 through 37. God says, nevertheless, my loving kindness I will never utterly take from him, nor will I allow my faithfulness to fail. My covenant I will not break. I will not alter the word that's gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever. His throne as the sun before me, it will be established forever like the moon even like the faithful witness in the sky. Do you understand? The sun and the moon are God's faithful witnesses in the sky that he will never break his covenant with the Jewish people. That is powerful to think about. Now in Exodus 12, verse 2, it says, This month will be the beginning of your months. It'll be the first month of the year for you. Well, guess what? That is tonight is the beginning of the biblical calendar when all the Moedim or the feast days are determined. And in Israel, they would light fires on the mountains. It would go from one mountaintop to the next mountaintop. So even all the way from Israel to Babylon and Lebanon and Syria, all the foreign countries so that all the Jews that are spread about would know as quickly as possible when the new moon began. So let's stand and let's say uh, the prayers for the new moon. Are you ready? Let's join together in prayer for the sanctification of the new moon. May it be thy will, Lord, our God and God of our fathers, that you begin for us this month for good and for blessing. May you give to us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of substance a life of physical health, a life in which there is fear of heaven and fear of sin, a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we love Torah and fear God, a life in which the Lord fulfills the requests of our hearts for good. Amen together. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who created the skies by your word and all of heaven's hosts with the breath of your mouth. You gave them appointed times and roles and they never missed their cues, doing their creator's bidding with gladness and joy. You are the true creator who acts faithfully and has told the moon to renew itself. It is a beautiful crown for the people of Israel who are carried by God from birth and who will likewise be renewed in the future in order to proclaim the beauty of their creator for his glorious majesty. Blessed are you, Lord, who renews the moons. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us to be a light to the nations and has given us Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. Okay, now at this time, I'm going to talk a little bit about the month of Nisan. In Exodus chapter 40, verse 1 and 2, it says, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, on the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. We know Nisan is the month of redemption. I have here in Hebrew, the Hebrew word for Nisan. And in red, I wanted you to notice the noon and the psalmic together spell the word Ness, which means miracle. So the month of Nisan is a unique time for a close attachment between God's people and their father in heaven. And consequently, a singular great time for the redemption to take place. Now, some say that the last redemption will be the same as the first redemption. <clears throat> now, I also want you to know every month 
also has a tribe associated with it. And the tribe that is associated with the month of Nisan is the tribe of Judah. As we know, from Judah came all the kings, and all the kings, their reign, it dates from the beginning of the month of Nisan. And as you can see in this slide of Exodus 12, 2, that I just quoted, where God says, this month shall be for you the beginning of months, I have highlighted there the word lachem, which means for you. Well, what's fascinating is you switch those letters around, you get the word melek or king. And Nisan is the month for kings. It's considered the new year for kings on Nisan 1. It was what determined how long a king reigned. And as you know, there is no king without a people. The declaration of God's sovereignty as king on Rosh Hashanah, tarnished by the sin of man, was reestablished on Nisan 1 when Israel became God's chosen people and God's sovereignty was renewed. So Judah, as I said, is the tribe for the month of Nisan, and it's from this tribe that the kings of Israel descended. It was in Nisan that the sign on the cross described Yeshua as the king of the Jewish people. And in Nisan, Yeshua was crowned with thorns as king of the Jews. And on Rosh Hashanah, he will be crowned king of kings over the whole world. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, it says, Where the word of a king is... Power and authority is, as a king governs through his words. Listen to what King David said in Psalm 39, verse 3. Here he says, I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. I can't help but think of the parallel concerning King Messiah In Isaiah 53, verse 7, where it says, He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. We know Nisan is also the month for unity. Listen to Psalm 133, verse 3. It says, this was a psalm of David. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that comes down upon the collar of his garments, like the dew of Hermon that comes down upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forever. Oh my goodness, this is the month of unity. This is the month where it says for brethren to dwell together in unity like the precious oil coming down upon the beard of Aaron. That event happened today on Nisan 1. It was at the grand opening ceremony of the tabernacle that Aaron sat down and that oil ran down his head. And when he came out to say the priestly blessing, the glory never fell. It wasn't until Moses and Aaron came together in unity and went into the Holy of Holies and came out and said the priestly blessing, that is when the glory fell on this very day. Day, about 3,500 years ago. And as this is the month of unity, Isaac was born in the month of Nisan. With that said, let's all stand together. I'll close with the priestly blessing. Ivarekaka Adonai Vaish Mareka, Yaer Adonai Panav Ileka Vichuneka, Isa Adonai Panav Ileka Viasam. Laka shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In that most wonderful name, Ayeth Asher Ayeth.